Hey friends, your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish. Two days ago, I shot a video called Let's Build an Adventure, in which I took adventure generators and uncovered secrets, two different rewards for patron subscribers to Sly Flourish, and used them to help me build an adventure for a game I had in a couple days, which is today. It's actually in a couple of hours I'm going to be running a game. And we spent a little more than an hour, maybe like an hour and 15 minutes or so, putting together an adventure, looking through a lot of different Eberron lore and Eberron content in order to build an adventure, rolled dice, generated an adventure, and generally got things put together. But I wasn't really finished yet. There's still things I'd like to do to get that adventure really prepped up and, and nice for folks. So uh, I thought I would jump on this morning, after having a couple of days of pondering it, and clean it up a bit. And I thought we could clean it up together. So here we are. I have a little agenda of things I thought we would do, like what's left to do. So this, let's build an adventure. This is actually the text for the adventure itself that we put together the other day. And the things that I, there were a few things that I wanted to do that I thought we would talk about. And that's uh, clean up the adventure in general. There's a lot of like little loose ends that I want to clean up. Some questions about what they're doing and why and where it came from and what its purpose is and originally and where it is and things like that. Things that I haven't really solidified yet that I'd like to solidify. Uh, I have since read up on the Daleker, the Gatekeepers, and Shadow Marches, and I think there's some more interesting lore for all three of those groups that we can tie into this adventure, so I'm gonna do a little bit of that. A big thing I wanted to do was annotate the map. So I have a map of the adventure location that they're going to, but I wanted to, I wanted to add like little descriptions onto the map so that when I'm running it, it's easier for me to run. And I thought that'd be an interesting thing to, to talk about and to show. Uh, there's a travel encounter that I have between the city, the city of Zarakash that they're going from and the place that they're going to, which I'm now referring to as the Keep of the Black Gate. It's a cool, cool name. Probably not original, but kind of cool. So I wanted to add some details to the encounter that they have there. I wanted to add some details to the town, to the city of Zarakash as well. And then kind of go through and do a final review and see how I feel about it. One thing that occurred to me is like two days before I shot the video where we build an adventure. I had posted a video called how to build, essentially like how to build an adventure in 15 minutes, right? Or what would you do? And the, the, the premise of the video is if you had only 15 minutes to prepare an adventure, what would you do? And I talked a lot about that sort of stuff, mostly like get your strong start set and start filling out secrets and clues. And if you have any time left over, you know, figure it out. And then I realized like, and then like a day later, I shot a video where in an hour and a half, I didn't finish prepping an adventure. So like what kind of hypocrisy is it for me to have a video talking about prepping an adventure in 15 minutes, shortly followed by me spending an hour and a half and then not being done. So I thought that that was, that, that was uh, really cool. That irony is not lost on me. Do I have an excuse for it? Yeah, A, I have the time. So the thing about the prepping a game in 15 minutes is working with the assumption that you only have 15 minutes and I've got time so I can spend some time on it. The other thing I'd say is like, I really was starting from scratch. I didn't even know what game world I was gonna run in. And we spent probably the first 20, 25 minutes of that show just digging into Eberron lore to find a place to run it. And if I had only 15 minutes, I'd just pick a place and go. And I would probably pick a place that I knew. Like I'd, you know, if I had really had only 15 minutes, I'd probably say like, what adventures of mine have you not played? And we'll run with that, right? So, you know, there, there are faster ways to get an adventure prepped, but I have the time. So, you know, I figure why not, why not, why not deal with it? Why not go ahead and spend the time on it and really kind of make it a nice thing? So that, so why is it taking me two hours to prep an adventure when I say like, you know, did I, do I say like you can prep an adventure in 15 minutes? Sure. I think you can. I have done it for other games. I've done it for games where I didn't even know I was going to be running a game and suddenly I found myself in the DM seat and I've whipped something up. I've also certainly done 15 minute prep for games where I'm in the middle of a campaign and all I need is something to fill out the next three hours of the campaign. It's usually not too hard. But when I'm really building like a, a lore rich adventure, uh, a four hour, full four hour adventure, you know, I, I probably need more because it was 30 minutes for me to pick a place. And I did, and I, I like it, you know, I, it, it took me time, but I came up with a place that I really dig called the Shadow Marches, Zarakesh and the Shadow Marches, which I have not spent any time in. So it's kind of fun to pick a place that I have not yet run an adventure in to run an adventure. And that's not something you would do if time was really tight. That's something you do when you've got time to spend to really kind of dig into the lore and stuff. So yeah, let's take a look at what we have so far. Let's do a, a quick review of what happened when we were last doing this. So first we had to choose a world, right? And of the worlds, I had a bunch of different worlds. Is it gonna be Midgard, Forgotten Realms, Planescape? You know, am I gonna do salt, um, salt Marsh uh, slash Greyhawk? 
And I had already kind of settled on Eberron. So that didn't take a lot of time to figure out that, no, I want, I want to do Eberron. I really love Eberron. It's, it's, I think it might be my favorite published campaign setting. I just love Eberron. And there's a new Eberron book coming out, by the way, by Keith Baker and company. So, so that's really cool. And then we spent time looking through a lot of the, the principalities, a lot of the regions of Corvair to try to say, where should I run this adventure? And I came up with about five different ones. I said, these all sound kind of cool and I wouldn't mind running it in any of these places. And that was Cubara, the Eldine Reaches, Breland in a place called the Black Pit, Karnath with some crazy undead stuff or more hold with dwarven, with dwarven things. And I ended up deciding, and then one other one that isn't on here was Shadow Marches. So Shadow Marches is what I ended up with. It's a swamp. It's a, kind of a cool swamp land where the gatekeeper, the, the orc druids called the gatekeepers really dealt with the Daleker and pushed the Daleker down underneath the earth. And there's old Daleker ruins. There's old gatekeeper ruins. There's a lot of old lore that exists there. And I kind of like the idea of starting it off like in an orc area where, where the, the, you know, the orcs are the dominant are the dominant species and we can see what orcs are like in Eberron and how they're different from, you know, the, the orc tribes up in the hills that are getting ready to raid villages. Like the orcs here are very old, very, you know, they, they have a, a long history and a powerful history and they basically save the world, right? And they have their own customs and their own, you know, religions and all of their own stuff that's theirs, right? And so they are not like a you know, hey, let's let all the humans come in and rescue them. It's like, no, we rescued you, if, you know, 20,000 years ago, you jackasses. So I, I kind of like that idea. I think I think there's there could be a lot of fun there. This series will be posted on YouTube. The first video is already edited and posted. I've got to clean up the metadata for it, but it will be up probably on Wednesday. So you can see the original video for this on Wednesday. If you want to see the raw video, it's up on Twitch. You can watch the rerun on Twitch and see it there. But yeah, this one and the other one will be will be cleaned up and put up on YouTube as probably a two-part series called Let's Make an Adventure. And for all I know, this may become a regular series if I make more adventures. So let's make an adventure. This one will be Let's Make an Adventure and the, the official title will be the Keep of the Black Gate, right? Because I think that's the name of the adventure we're gonna run. So he chose uh, Shadow Marches really like that. So then it was like, well, what type of adventure am I going to run? And what we came to is you know more of a straight, so there's a bunch of different kinds of adventures that I have in the adventure generators, which are one of the rewards that you get for being a patron of Sly Flourish. By the way, this show, like all of the work I do, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. You too can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and signing up. And doing so gets you access to the adventure generators and uncovered secrets that I'm using to help generate this adventure. So in the adventure generators, there are some sort of big packages together, like Seven Samurai Jaws, Raiders of Lost Ark, Hearts of Darkness, The Keep, and Kill, and, 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 and yeah, something else. I don't know where Kill Someone came, came from. Get rid of that one. But then there's like a general adventure generator, which is kind of what I started with. And I rolled on that. And the first thing I rolled was... And I don't know if I put it in here. Oh yeah, so so then I, I ran the generic adventure generator and what I got was who's the patron? And it was a, it was a, a, a haughty tiefling named Pride was the patron who I, you know, and because I know that I'm gonna be running it in Shadow Marches and because I, I, I picked some of the lore, I know that this patron this this patron pride the haughty taff the ha pride the haughty tiefling works for House the Rask, which is the the explorers, right? They are, they're the ones that kind of go out and do bounty hunting and 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 find things and and look for lore. And they are the primary house inside Shadow Marches, inside the city of of Zarakesh. So seeing like their home is kind of kind of cool. What's the job? I, I wrote kill someone and awaken something, and it's like okay. And I think I liked awaken something better. And to me, awakening, I sort of jumped to how about opening a gate, right? That, that you know, we, we want to, what if their job is to open up an ancient gatekeeper gateway that exists? So that became the plot of the adventure. Where does it take place? I rolled castle, I think, and I switched it over to a Dalek or keep and a, or, and a gatekeeper academy. So I think that these, these two things are kind of neat. And I, I think this is one where you can sort of layer the locations together and say it was originally a Daleker sort of, you know, a, a Daleker intrusion, a place where the Daleker walked through into, into the name of the Eberron world. Its name escapes me. Like the equivalent of Toral. Eberron, I guess. Is it called Eberron? Is that the world? I don't know. So, uh, but basically that's where the Daleker came from. And then the gatekeepers sort of built a structure around it to house it and to protect it and to seal that gateway. And then also served as an academy for other gatekeepers, right? It was like a place 
where the gatekeepers came in. So then there was like, well, who protects the gateway? And this is where I got into the like, you know, this actually fits the sort of Raiders of the Lost Ark theme a little bit. I started to use stuff from the Raiders of the Lost Ark adventure generator in which like, well, who's protecting it? And we decided that it was like Azamar orcs, right? It's these celestial orcs, these orcs who have transcended beyond mortality and they still guard it and they're still out there. So I thought that would be kind of a neat group to have in there. And then who else wants to take control of the gateway? Like who else is doing it? And I rolled elves and we're like, who are the elves? And they came to Blood of Vol are kind of elves. So what if the Blood of Vol was coming in here and they were dealing with it? And I've since thought that like another, what if it's like a sect of the Blood of Vol who has switched over? And this is where, you know, I'm starting to think a little bit more about it. What if they switched over to worship of um, Belashira, the the Daleker? Like they they start to think that maybe they were following the wrong group and that Belashira, the seer, is really the, the one that they should be following. So maybe it's a sect of Blood of Vol that has since switched over to Belashira. What's going on in the area? Small meteors are hammering the ground. So that's kind of that's kind of an interesting, you know, that yeah, we had like rocks, rocks fall, I think was it. And so it's like, what are these small meteors? And the interesting thing is like, Loki, if you watched the TV show Loki recently, Loki had that same thing. So what if what if that kind of thing was happening? I don't know how I'm going to fit that in. And, and maybe I'll maybe I don't need it. Right? Maybe I'm not going to worry. So then from those adventure generator results, I'll show the actual adventure generators I use. So this is the core adventure generator set. Again, patrons of Sly Flourish, you have access to this right away. Everybody else, if you don't want to join the Patreon, it will be in a book that's coming out later this year or early next called The Lazy DM's Companion, which is going to have all this kind of stuff in it. Great big book full of this stuff. And so this is where I rolled like the patron and that's where I got the haughty, you know, the haughty tiefling 7-7 seven, seven was, was that one. This is where I got the quests and it was, so there's activate something, but awaken something. And you know, you, you let these things draw from your imagination and see where it goes. And that's what, that's what kind of came there. Then I rolled a location and I think I got a castle. Where was the castle? It wasn't an obsidian keep. Castle dungeon, was that what I rolled? I don't remember. But I think, you know, you know what we're going to do is grab Obsidian Keep because I think that that fits, that makes more sense. The monuments and items and stuff like this, I can fill out as we go. And I think I rolled in this, I rolled it too, and I got cultists again. Hey, more cultists. But then there's also a lot of aberrant creatures that I want to throw in here. So the rest of this stuff is sort of like as we dive deeper into it. And we may come back to this when we're actually filling out the dungeon itself. So this is like the generic adventure, the core adventure generator that I use. But then there's Raiders of the Lost Ark. And this is where I got like the Celestial Guardians, right? That like, you know, the somewhere in here are, are yeah, protective Celestials were, were guarding the artifact, right? And the rivals, I think this is where it's Sinister Elves. And that's where he got to Blood of Vol. And this is where when I rolled with Fantastic Environment Surrounds It, that was where the Falling Rocks came in. And, and I think I rolled on this because I wanted to have an intro. We'll see it when I look at the strong start. But I wanted to have an intro where they, we started in media res and I, I used this one and it was like they were getting i think it was i actually didn't roll on this one i rolled on a different table to find a tiara and i just turned that into a circlet and so we said that there's a circlet and i think i had they, they the place they were going was like an ancient tomb and it's like oh okay so blood of all is raiding an ancient tomb to pick up the circlet characters have to go and get the circlet and then that sort of starts the adventure right so that's the way we have a strong a strong start to our adventure that was sort of how I mixed a couple of different tables. And that's really the intention of these tables is you, you don't have to just sit on one of them. You can, if you just say, I want to run a Raiders of the Lost Ark adventure, you just grab it and run a Raiders of the Lost Ark one. But if you want to like mix things together, you can use the core with Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is why these are called core, right? Is that you can use these tables and mix it in with all of the others to kind of fill things out. So that's really, that's really the goal there. So we got the main arc, Pride the Tiefling Handler of House Theresk hires the characters to travel in the Shadow Marches to Castle Madness, which we're calling the Keep of the black gate to open an orc gatekeeper gateway to worm watch in Cubara. So the two locations could be hours away instead of weeks and months, right? That's the main arc of the story. That's what the, the quest handler is telling them to do. There's of course complications. So then we said, what are the eight steps? And the, the one thing that we said was, I don't know anything about the characters yet. I still don't, but I know that we have a character patron and the character patron is pride of house. The Rask. he is there or she is there patron. So I think I want to make a, I want to find a picture of pride. So let's do D and D tiefling. We'll look up some images here right away. You know, so why waste a lot of time, right? She looks awesome. We're going to copy that image. I think what we'll do instead is link there and then we'll just delete this. That way I can just link over to it. All right. So we got a picture of pride. I think I'm, I'm just become a bigger and bigger fan of random tables as a way to help shock our minds out into thinking in new ways. And I love it. 
So we have Pride of House the Rask, and then we well, the questions for the characters: How are you connected to House the Rask and Pride, Pride, um, Pride the Halfling? Then we have a strong start. They start in an old tomb surrounding a floating obelisk. The characters face off against a blood of Vol fanatic and her undead servants. And we decided we're going to have a cult fanatic, a cult, one cultist, a, a secondary cultist, an ogre zombie, and four skeletons, right? And we decided that it's a pretty hard fight for third level, but, you know, I can kind of work. I think the CR for this cult fanatic was three. The cultist is negligible. The ogre zombie, I think, was also a three. And then the skeletons are pretty negligible, but that's still high given the deadly encounter benchmark. The cult fanatic has a circle of blasting, and the, and, the, and the characters are there to go get that circlet back. So the scenes are, they defeat the blood of Vol fanatic and recover the circlet. Uh, they find out that the blood of Vol wants to open the gateway inside the keep of the black gate. So that's the kill someone. Stop the other one. Stop the other, the, and it's, it's actually the cult fanatic's sister a brother uh, from opening up the black gate. That's one job. But the other job is, and you could open it, and you could open it to Kubara instead, right? So then they get the job. Then along the way, they find submerged corpses and dead orcs and Dalekar around a flaming effigy. I actually found a map inside the D&D Beyond or inside the Rising of the Last War. There it is. This is the map that I wanted. So, and it looks like, you know, the player map. So this could be an area that's like a suck in the swamp. It's filled with corpses. Maybe it's been burned. Dalek are attacked or maybe the cultist attacked and they find like a bunch of different ones. So I think that this could be a cool map to use. So we're going to, we're going to, you know, throw this uh, in the locations, the gatekeeper campsite. So now if we click on that, it brings us right to that map. Very cool. So that's going to be our location. And at the gatekeeper campsite, I'm jumping around a little bit, but what's there? So we, we, we rolled some, some stuff there, and we said that there's a flaming effigy. We said that there's floating corpses. And maybe, let's throw another one. So let's go over to the core things, and we're going to say there's monuments. What is another monument? Well, we know we have the standing stone. So, because in the map, there's, the, and that might be where the effigy is. That's the seal, right? And we know we have these megaliths and stuff like that. So, but, but, but we'll roll on an interesting condition. What's going on with the megaliths? And that's where we have this cool, like, condition table, right? 1D20 conditions. What's going on with the megaliths, right? And so we roll and we hit nine, and nine says ringing. The megaliths are ringing, right? Ringing megaliths. So that's pretty cool, right? I don't know what that means, but you can hear them. They're like, there's like a something coming from them, a, dis, a disjointed ringing coming from them. So that's kind of neat. Did we decide if there's anything? That, I don't know if we necessarily need to do a fight there. It might be better if they kind of came here after a fight. And maybe there's a wounded, you know, we could have a wounded member of the cult of the uh, Blood of all. Turn cult of Belashira. She, does she have names? Do they have names for her? What do they call her? Lord of Eyes. Cult of the Lord of Eyes. I also don't want to give away, or the all-seer, right? I don't want to give away the beholder aspect of this too soon. So that's cool stuff, right? Oh, let's give him a name. So in the, so my names are in the other one. They're, they're in the improvisational tools of the Uncovered Secrets which is the other PDF that you get for belonging to uh, the Sly Flourish patron. And so we're going to go with, we'll go with Agtos. Agtos Needlefinger, Needlefinger will be the, where are my NPCs? Agtos Needlefinger is a former blood of Vol turned cultist of the All Seer, dying at the, the Gatekeeper Seal. So we have our strong start. So then we have that. Then the, they get the job. Uh, they find out the blood of all along the journey. They find submerged corpses at a an old gatekeeper seal. There's dead orcs. There's Dalekar. There's a flaming effigy and dead, dead cultists. Then they go to the keep. They crawl it. They find the gate and they use the circlet. And then they decide what they want to do. One thing is like decisions, right? I want to give them decisions. So do they open the gate to Kubara, do they seal the gate as the gatekeepers want? It's really two big choices. What else could they do? I mean, the third one is, do they open the gateway to Zoriat? Yeah, they're not going to do that, but for funsies, they could. That was what the cultists wanted to do. 
So uh, those are the scenes. We'll take a quick review through the secrets and clues here. Gatekeeper, orcs, battle, the twisted aberrants of Dalekar. Yep, we know that. Orcs built a keep around all day. We Actually, one thing we can do is turn these into a checklist uh, so that we can turn them off when we really, when we reveal them. Orc built keep around old Dalekar gateways that they could use to travel across the lands quickly. Some orcs felt that using the gateways brought great danger to the land. Others found them too because they were using Dalekar gateways. So some gatekeeper orcs have celestial blood and still protect the gates. Blood of all hopes to use the gates to transfer armies. No, blood of all, a sect. We're going to change this. Of the blood of all, ha blood of all has heard the whispers of the all seer, the Dalekar Belashira. I have no idea how to pronounce this stuff. Well, so this is about the blood of all. The cult of the all seer wants to release Belashira to the surface. Indian DMM says, hey, Sly, good video about the Heralds. Yes, I think maybe we will turn a needle finger into the Herald, right? Herald of Agtos. Do I have two Agtoses? Oh man, I have two Agtos. Herald of Agtos. So I need needle finger. I think we'll just call him needle finger. All right, why give him, yeah, we're good. So needle finger can become my Herald, right? He's a Herald for Agtos and a Herald for the All Seer. That'll be fun. He's already like wounded. He's a single cultist. He's CR one quarter. They could like hit him with a stick and he's dead, but he just talks a bunch of shit. And it's like, well, the stuff he's saying is kind of useful to hear. So we've got that. Blood of all bleed deaths, blood of all grim faith founded by Arandas Devol, an elf from Aranal, asserts that death is oblivion and the universe is uncaring and if the sovereign exists, they are cruel. The cult of the Allseer wants to reach Belashira to the surface. The gatekeepers are one of the oldest sects primarily found among the orcs of Shadow March as they... So some of this I stole right out of the other stuff. So what other... Are there other added secrets that I want to have? Oh, I guess about... So the Dalekar built the keep of the Black Gate... So I'm calling this thing, right? Is that what I decided I want the name of this thing to be? Keep of the Black Gate? Sounds good. A Dalekar built the Keep of the Black Gate as an entry point between the world and Zoriat. The gatekeepers built a keep, built a citadel around it. So they built the Black Gate. They didn't build the keep. Built a keep around the gate to keep it protected and to act as an academy for our future gatekeepers. So I think that that tightens things up a little bit, right? One of the things that I wanted to do is tighten up like the gate. So what was the gate originally? The gate was built by the Dalekar, right? They used it as a, as a way, they were, they were trying to use it to bring the true most powerful Dalekar into the, into the surface world and it didn't work. And the gatekeeper said, well, we can't destroy this thing. We have to seal it. And the other one's like, you know, we can use this. Like it's a way to transfer stuff in between places really quickly. So there's like, the, should we use a Dalekar rift, you know? And even now, House Thrask is like, let's use that shit, right? Like, man, we can transfer goods between here and Cubara in like seconds. That beats the hell out of the rail system, right? This is great. And they're like, yeah, but it's a gateway connected to Zoriad. How do you know it's not going to open up to Zoriad? And I was like, ah, it's fine. So that's kind of the fun twist. Yeah, so I think those secrets are good. Fantastic location. So I have the gatekeeper campsite, which I added. Uh, I don't need grab a map anymore. I, I'll keep it there just for, for funsies. When you click grab a map, it goes to my Dyson, uh, it goes to Dyson logos. And you pick one of the thousand maps that are there. Why draw your own maps? I know people love to draw maps. Okay, I'm gonna get on a soapbox for a minute here. I know you love to draw maps. Lots of people love drawing maps. And if you wanna draw maps, go with the gods. If you're busy, if you're lazy, if you got wanna focus your time on other things, man, Dyson, a thousand maps. Look at this, you just go, oh, maps. So many maps. It just keeps going and going and look at all of them. Oh my God. Look at all these maps. Are you telling me that you, A, can outstrip Dyson for drawing a map, or B, that he hasn't drawn one that you can use in your game? Come on, there's a thousand of them here. Bang, right? He says 992, that can't be right. I, I'm, I think it's more than that. You know, I think it's over a thousand. But you wanna find a map? I know I'm too busy to find maps. I'm too busy to draw maps, so I'm fine. And we call the Castle Madness, but we're, we're, we're changing the name of this to Keep of the Black Gate. And so a big part of what we're gonna to do today is annotate that. So we'll go back, but let's look at some of the rest of it first. So the NPCs, we have Pride the Half-In, we have Orvist Dawnborn, a Orc Celestial Protector. Let's look at Orc Paladin. Let's find an image of an Orc Paladin. That's pretty cool. We'll go with that guy. And now we've got an image, right? 
So I don't think I'm going to bother finding images of all of these. Well, let's take a look. So blood of all, D&D blood of all priest. Let's see if we get any images. We got these, you know, the cool miniatures. What's that guy? Oh, look at him. Yeah, we're grabbing that. Open image, a new tab. Copy the, I guess we just went the URL. That will be our Agtos Night Chaser, right? Is there a female Blood of Old Priest? Oh, that one looks good. Look at her. Copy. Let's see, open image, a new tab. Get some good pictures on the Google. All right, just link to that. We have uh, Dolly Mountain Storm. So let's see. So uh, yeah, so I got an NPCs monsters. I've got a whole bunch of different monsters. Oh, I, I, so one thing is like, I think I picked a, I think I picked a beholder that was too dangerous. No, CR3, that's fine. Spectator's good. What was the, but I think I picked a different one. The mind, I think we're not gonna do a mind witness. Let's take a look at the mind witness. Um, whoa, 20 psychic damage when it hits with a tentacle. And then I raise three of the following magical I rays. And it's got stunning, slowing, telekinetic, fear, psychic, and does a lot. That's probably too hard. I think we're going to stick to, uh, I think we're going to skip the mind witness and stick with the spectator. And the gouth, I think, is even less, right? There's so many different. This gouth is CR6. And it has a stunning gaze. Ugh. Well, I'll keep it on hand, but I'm probably going to stick to eats magic. I don't know. We'll see how they do. I may either use a gouth, which is the CR6. Actually, one, since I've got it up, I might as well link to it, right? So I'm good there. And the circle of blasting actually is going to do force damage instead of fire, just for thematic reasons. So that works. So now, why don't we, let's, let's annotate the map, right? So I have a whole new kind of window for this. So this is a tool called uh, Zoho Annotator. And Zoho Annotator lets you upload an image the link for Zoho Annotator is right here. It is a Chrome plugin that lets you annotate images, as you imagine. So I uploaded an image in Zoho Annotator, and all I want to do is drop text, right? All I want to do is annotate. Shocker. We're going to use black, and we're going to say gate, the black gate, right? And I think I can, I don't need the font size to be too big, so that will work. Right, and I can just drop an annotation right on the map. So I wanna fill out the rest of this. So it looks like there's one main entry point. This actually looks like a pretty linear dungeon, which is kind of lame. I guess it's not totally linear, but I wanna sort of fill this place out. So what is this? So these, these tunnels are old. The, the keep itself is sealed, right? No one has been inside, but there's like this big natural tunnel that's breaking through in here. So this is their pathway into the tunnel. This, this really doesn't hit the, I mean, it's got a few loops, but not a lot. It actually looks pretty linear, but I guess, I think that'll be okay. It doesn't need to be completely open. There's some, there's some other stuff in here. So I mostly want to say like, well, what are, what kind of fills out these chambers? So this first fork here, is there some kind of interesting thing there? And what we will do, and actually I'll load it up. Da, 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 da. Let me grab the adventure generators and we'll paste it into a new window in here so I can roll on stuff. Uh, so what will be in that first one? And we're going to roll two. We're going to, my, one of my dice is going to be for a condition and the other one is going to be for the monument type. So five is the monument. So there's a monstrous skull. That's very cool. And 10 was the condition and that monstrous lightning skull, electrical skull. So that. So that's kind of cool. So then we just go right in here and we, we add another text thing and we're gonna say, we'll put it right in here, monstrous monstrous lightning skull, right? And we, we could put it anywhere. I think we'll just stick it right there, right? It doesn't have to be pretty, but it has to be legible. One thing I like about the annotator is it throws a drop shadow behind it so you can see the text regardless of what's behind. That works really well. Then, so then we have this little side chamber here. What might be in there? Again, we'll roll again. 13 is 17, 13 is the condition. 13 is oozing, that fits. And 17 is uh, a spire, an oozing spire. Ooh, the oozing spire. Don't know what that does, right? But that's pretty cool. Then we have this chamber here, the next sort of chamber down the line. This might be too many. But what the hell? 
And we have 15 and 16. So 16 is the item. Uh, and 16 is a summoning circle. Hmm. And what was the other one? 15? 15 is a whispering summoning circle. Ooh, that's, that's weird, isn't it? That one we will put, you know what? We're gonna stick that up here. That's kind of cool. Let's roll again. 19 and four. So four is a, oh, so 19 is a crystalline and four is a, a crystalline sarcophagus. Aha, so what do we think they did there? Maybe it's our celestial, perhaps it's a, the celestial. You know what? I think we're gonna put that like in here. Cause a, a crystalline sarcophagus, I don't know that you can do alignment. I don't see alignment. That's kind of a bummer. You know, I want to do central line, but that doesn't matter. So we have a crystalline sarcophagus. That could be where our celestial orc is, right? And then 11 and nine. 11 is the condition. Nine is the object. Nine is a throne. 11 is a radiant throne. So that could be cool. What if we moved this guy here? and we had a radiant throne here, right? That might be kind of neat. I still need something down here. I don't know what that's gonna be. Let's try again. And in two, 19 is uh, again, another crystalline thing. And two is an obelisk. That might be kind of, yeah, so we could do that, All right? Whoops, I don't need that window anymore. So go here and we're gonna put a crystalline. That's kind of cool. Only a couple chambers. We know the gate is here. And so some of the, I'm not going to do like random crap for all of these. Uh, up here we know is the overlook, right? Gateway overlook. And are there any other? So we could, we know that this was a, we know this was an academy, right? So we can fill in some like academic things. We know we have gatekeeper quarters here. We have another one over here. So really just one other little chamber out here. Oh, so we have like a hall of heroes, right? where statues of the old, statues of the old gatekeepers can be found here. And then we have this one last chamber here and it's been like partially eaten away. So what what would, you know, do we want anything there? Well, I guess we'll roll again. So we'll go back here and we will roll. And we have 17 and one. 17 is a spire and one is a smoky spire. That's how you spell smoky. Yeah. Right, so that that's not bad. I think I'm gonna throw an altar to Belashira here, right? Altar of the Allseer could be there. I think that that works pretty well. So I got a cool map. So what happens when I click done? Oh my God. Oh, I thought I lost it. That was freaky, huh? So we're gonna download that sucker and let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I clicked it and everything disappeared. You see everything disappear? That freaked me out. So now, I don't know how big that thing is though. So let's go back to our other windows. Do, do, do. And we will go to our notes. And we have, I, I, I did a Keep of the Black Gate page. So I have this page in here and I can upload an image and I'm trying to download. And look, now I've got a nice one that's annotated, right? All with annotator. Boy, it freaked me out when I clicked that and it didn't work. And if we click the original, it looks a little fuzzy, but when you go in, it's, it's pretty clear. So it's only the rendering that's fuzzy, but good enough to read and certainly good enough for me to like be able to describe interesting things and tie secrets to it and stuff like that. So like, I don't need more details in this, right? And like, what was that? 10 minutes or so, I filled out a map with about, you know, more than a dozen locations, about a dozen locations. So, and then I've got the blank map so I can use this and take screenshots of it and throw it in Discord while we're playing over Discord. So that works pretty well. Let's see, let's build an adventure keep of the black gate. Can I do a return here? No. Yeah, look at that. Very good. Yes, all of those tables and charts and everything, if you would like access to them, you can do so by joining my Patreon. And if you do, you get an email, I think. You get an email and a post that says, hey, here's the uncovered secrets and adventure generators and everything is in there. Every month I add new ones. So there's more stuff coming and they're pretty rich now. They're, they're, it's like 50 pages of stuff. So you get a lot. All of that material is gonna be uh, cleaned up and laid out and edited and then put into a book called The Lazy DM's Companion, which will be coming out late this year, or early next. And the Kickstarter for that will be coming out probably this uh, late summer or fall, maybe midsummer. I don't know. We'll see how things go. Working on it now. I should make all these checklists, right? Turn into checklists. So did I clean up the adventure? Do I know what the gate is? Yes, I know what the gate is. Do I know how it works? Yes. Do I know who put it there? Yes. Do I know who did that? Yes, that was all Dalek or jackasses, right? So 
All of that cleanup is done. Did I add secrets to the gatekeepers, daily current shadow marches? I did. Uh, did I add locations to the map? Yes, I did that. Did I add details for the traveling counter? No, let's do that next. And I need to add details for Zarakesh. So I got a couple things left to do. So the traveling encounter, I, I guess I did add some details to this, right? Yeah, so I got the gatekeeper camp, campsite. There's a wounded blood of all member. I'm not gonna put an attack here because we will have already had a battle. Like we're gonna have a big starting fight. So if we have a big starting fight, we don't need a fight while they're going on the way. And this is where you turn those dials, right? I talk about the dials and pacing, right? And you don't always need to have an encounter in an encounter location. The encounter could be one wounded CR one quarter guy who talks a bunch of shit. That's the encounter, right? And do they fight him? Maybe. Right, but there's going to be a lot of weird dead tentacly things. There's going to be a lot of dead cult members, and there'll be some dead orc gatekeepers that used to that used to camp out that place. So there's going to be some interesting stories at this campsite. So I think that that's pretty well set. This whole I can get rid of these things because I now have a keep of the black gate page. All right, you click that and you get the maps, and the map. Oh, why isn't showing up? There it goes. Has all the names of the places on it. So I don't really need anything there. When you're building an adventure for yourself, you don't need to have anything more than what you need to fire off your own synapses in your head. You don't need to, you're not given to anybody else to run, right? So you don't really need, you know, you don't need to have like big detailed lists of stuff. Better to just jot down some notes so that you have what you need when you're running the game. I got my NPCs. Oh, so the other location that we want is the name of the town, right? And the name of the town is, oh, uh, Zarakash. That is an important location. So notable features of Dar Zarakash. Uh, sit on an old swamp, elevated on massive stilts. Headquarters of the house of House Therask. What other interesting features? Is there any other interesting features? Old gatekeeper megaliths. Any other interesting things? The ships, is there any? Is there, are there airships here? Probably not. Huge ships on the horizon. So I think that that's probably enough, right? And I've got our, so probably actually when well, there is something we could use, I'm gonna close a couple of these windows here. I need this guy. So I just wrote a settlement generator and actually it's updated. Oh, it's in the new one. I, I, I think I updated it in the, Thing. So stealth update, if you are a patron backer, these things change all the time. And now I think I have a settlement generator. So some interesting settlement location. So I'm gonna roll a couple D20 because we wanna have the name of it, the like the inn where they meet their, oh God, I rolled off the thing. 28, so black, the black moon. Wow, cool tavern. Is it a tavern public house, right? Where they meet pride. That's cool. The actual, the first location is the tomb. So who is it a tomb to, right? That's a question. And we can use our, we can use some of this stuff and say it is a tomb to a 18, to a, a shadow. Hmm, I don't know about that. Let's try again. Shadow's already undead. A tomb to a celestial again. A celestial who though? Let's roll a d10 for a different race. A celestial half orc. Okay, so maybe it's another gatekeeper tomb. I'm doing a lot of gatekeeper, but I guess that would make sense, right? That that's where the circlet came from. So I guess that that's cool. Uh, and I need a name. Whoops. So we go to tools improv, and this would be Rawl, R O L. And let's give him a surname Dark Slicer, Iron, Dark Iron. Thorn Runner, Dark Bane, Dark Bad, Dark Cleaver, Iron Cleaver, Worm Worm Cleaver, sure. Gatekeeper Paladin, right? Holder of the circuit, holder of the circlet. And there's a risen, a floating obelisk in the tomb. Sure. Yeah, so I got four fantastic locations for a five hour game, which is probably about right. And one of them is a great big map. So, so that is pretty well done. Let's go back to my little thing of checklist of things I needed to do. So I got the traveling encounter and I've got Zarakash. All right, so I'm pretty well set, but let's, so let's do our final review, right? Just a quick, quick look. Do I feel good about where things are going? I know my strong start. They're in Zarakash. They're in an old tomb outside of Zarakash. It's a tomb of this guy, you know, one of the, the, the protector. He was a gatekeeper. It's kind of the introduction to the gatekeeper orcs. He had the circlet. 
Blood of Vol is trying to get the circlet. House the Rask wants them to get rid of the Blood of Vol and get the circlet. That's start the start, right? Then they go back, they meet. Yeah, so I got my scenes. Feel really good about that. Lots of secrets and clues to give up. And the other thing is I'll have the Eberron book there. So I can always dive into the Eberron book and find more secrets and secrets and clues too. So that that is really cool. Got lots of good locations, lots of good details in these locations. I got a good handful of NPCs. I got Needlefinger, the Herald of Agtos, and and the, the All Seer. That's going to be fun. Monsters. I've got a bunch of different aberrant monsters. A Neogi and a Neogi Master, maybe. Gauth. We could have like mutated undead, right? Because they're Blood of Vol, what if they made like z- z- half, like not zombie mind flayers, but kind of, right? Like, you know, kind of fun things to do there. So. I don't know. I'm going to improvise the monsters a fair bit, I think. And, you know, I've got a good list of them, of like things that I think could work out and be pretty cool. So, yeah, so I think we're okay there. And then, so one of the things about treasure, I don't really have to worry about it too much because I'm giving away a big piece of treasure in the beginning and everybody's starting with an uncommon magic item. So they already have a good deal of treasure. But then I have this poisonous spike that casts acid arrow. It's pretty cool. And we say once, but it doesn't matter because it's one session, so... We could say that it casts Acid Arrow. Why is this not bolding? Oh, whatever. Once per short, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Yeah, so I think I've got pretty much everything I need, right? And yeah, and that was the kind of the purpose of this video was cleanup, right? I felt, I was, I was probably ready to go. I could have improvised my way through it with what I had, but I had the time. I've got the game in 50 minutes, 55 minutes. I got, you know, I had time to go. And so like, why not clean it up further? And this is now feels like a pretty good, rich, four hour adventure, good one shot game, interesting places to explore, a lot of lore, you know, so I'm pretty happy with it. And did it take me two hours? It took me two hours because I got to talk to you people, right? If I didn't have to talk to you guys, I could have done it in an hour. No, I'm, just, I'm kidding. But like, you know, I think that, Talking it through obviously takes more time, but yeah, when you have the time and you really want to dive in, you can really, you can really do a lot. So yeah, you know, this, I definitely had more than 15 minutes and definitely took more than 15 minutes. It's about two hours of prep, I'd say. And maybe it was like an hour. If I was doing it on my own, probably an hour, maybe a little bit more than an hour, right? But not a ton of time. And you can see it's still loose, right? But it fits my size. It's got lots of material for me to use to run the game. And that's really what I need. It's really like thinking about cooking and you've got a bunch of dishes out there and you got all the stuff that you need in the dishes. I like to think about like a hibachi grill. Like you go to a hibachi grill and they got all this food laid out and then a guy comes up in front of you and they throw shrimp on there and they throw egg yolk stuff on the shrimp and they cook it and then they fling it at you, right? And you know, it's, you're, you're cooking and eating at the same time. Korean barbecue is kind of the same way. Like you're cooking and eating at the same time. Right. And that's, these are the ingredients, right? I've got lots of tasty ingredients to run the game today, but the game is going to go in the direction that it goes at the table. I don't know what's going to happen. And I think that that's the fun part of the game. So I want to thank everybody for hanging out this morning while I cleaned up my adventure. I hope you found this useful and fun. If you are interested in the adventure generators of the Uncovered Secrets, you can get access to them right now by joining the Sly Flourish Patreon at patreon.com slash Sly Flourish. If you want to help out in other ways, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. You can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter, or you can pick up my book, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, or the Lazy DM's workbook, which also has lots of tools and tables to build adventures like this. So thank you very much for coming. Twitch folks, thank you very much for hanging out today and helping me out. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had a good morning and drank some coffee. I will be back on again tomorrow morning to prepare for my Rhyme of the Frostman game and for the, la- the for the Lazy D&D talk show. So we'll talk about more things D&D tomorrow morning at nine in the morning on Sunday, Eastern Standard Time. Set your alarms. And I will talk to you guys later. Thank you very much. Have a great day.